hope we wanted that function, that uniqueness, that fulfilling God's purpose, and uh, and yet, and I'm just being very honest and open with you. It, it became almost like they didn't care what the personality, the uniqueness of the church was. They wanted their agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is where I'm headed here. So, so follow me. Uh, how does, what does God do? How does God direct the church? Do we, you know, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this. How do, how do you find out what God's purpose is in your life? Yes, there has to be that personal walk. There has to be that, and I talked about this last week, there has to be that sense of, of prayer and, and listening to what God's saying to you. But, but in all of that, what we've got to grab a hold of is that Christ is the head of the church. I'm sorry, but I pastored five or six churches in my lifetime, and I was the pastor. I was the under shepherd. I was not the head shepherd. And you can talk, you can go to Ephesians first, chapter 22, fourth chapter 15, first Corinthians 12. You can look at all of that, and it, it just talks about how that Christ is the head of the church. Well, how in the world are we going to find out what the head of the church wants to to do this unique church. And, 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 I, and I realize, and I look at my life, and this is what I see, okay? I, I'm, I'm wanting you to grab hold of this. What, what I've struggled with is my agenda. And, and every church that I've ever pastored, I have taken time and effort wrestled and sought the Lord, uh, had people praying with me, people praying for me, praying against me, you know, you had all kinds of things going on. But if we're not careful, we get so busy building the quilt that we forget what the quilt's for. It's for the Lord. It's not just the beauty of it. I lost some of you on that. It's the uniqueness of what I watched them. I, I don't watch a lot of TV, but I, for some reason I had it on. I flipped the channel the other night just for I was going somewhere, and and somebody had a '64 and a half Mustang, and they were re, they were gonna in seven days gonna take that '64 and a half Mustang mm -hmm. and recondition, and it looked good. I, I took it in a moment. Well, they found rust under one finger. I had to take the whole finger off and get a new one. They found, and when it's all said and done, it was almost a new car. They had the fiberglass, they had, the, and all of these things were wrong with it. They were just covered up with paint. And so I look at, please with me tonight. I look at your life and I'm asking you to be honest with me. Is it just covered up with paint? Oh, I teach Sunday school class. I go to church two times a week, three times a week. I, I tithe. I, and, and, you know, I do all these things. I call people. And sometimes that can be paint. And, and when, when the Holy Spirit comes in, all of a sudden he starts hitting the fender and it's, and you find out it's, it's not right. Something's wrong. And, and how God does that is that he, when we pray that prayer, not my will but thine be done, all of a sudden he starts saying, oh, okay, that's, that's hollow. <laughs> uh, there was a time when I was working in construction years ago that I could, I could walk into a room and in just a few seconds tell you where all the studs were at. I could, you know, you, you could hit the wall not five times, but you could hit one time. You just, you know, there's just something to sense about it. You could sense what's going on there. And, and when we first get saved, we we know that Holy Spirit speaking to our heart. We say, oh, that's, I don't know about that. It's not just right. I can't, you know, God's telling me not to do this. Or he's telling me to do that. But what happens is, we get mature. We 
grew that 64 and a half Mustang, and we repaired the seats. We've got a, we've got a transmission that's slipping a little, but we put some STP in there. Hello? You'll make it. And Christ is saying to us, i got a unique church that I want to build, and now I want you to, let's redo it. And I think that's where this church is going through, and a lot of churches in America that are just poisoned to go into the, I mean, take the community for Jesus Christ. They're saying, how do we do that? What is God's plan for this? And so the basic function of a church, uh, once you get the spiritual leadership of that church in place, and I'm talking about Christ, is that all of a sudden he, he says to us the Great Commission in Matthew 28 and again in Acts 2, uh, many places in Scripture, you will find that he says, Go! And so how do we get... I, I'm not going to ask anybody here how long you've been saved, but how do we get going again? How do we get functioning like we did when we first got saved. How do we have that, I can't wait to get to church. I can't wait to, you know, find out what's going on. I can't wait to get into the Word of God tonight. I can't, and, and so, kind of take a look here tonight and see where we're at. And I want to apply to you individually. Uh, there, there's a phrase, uh, I have a degree in, rep, uh, I have a degree in electrical engineering. And, uh, I, I got that degree running away from God. And, but I found out enough, even in electrical engineering, that, that the architect part of that, when you're building stuff and putting things together, that, and I'm, I'm, I thought about this this afternoon, I don't want to use, I'm not trying to be coy and you know, got this little phrase, but I remember one professor saying this to us, form always follows function. The children have grasped on a little bit. The form always follows the function. The form of this church should follow the function of this church, not the other way around. If you think you're going to get all the departments and all the hoo hoo, all this together, and then everything's going to, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Our lives get direction, and then we begin to set it in form. You with me? So what happens is, as a Christian, we get, we get, bridge that falls. We get a wiring system that gets blows the amps. <laughs> you got too many things plugged in there. You, you, and I will tell you this, and I know this from the time you worked in here, there were times when your breaker broke, flipped, because you were doing too many things. Uh, you don't want to admit, but I, I mean, <laughs> I, my breaker flips every once in a while. Especially if you start being active in church and started doing things. <laughs> yeah, I just said to you, the form follows the function, but sometimes you get so many functions, your form messes up, and you don't have time to do that right. I, uh, I said to the, to the secretary of the church in coffee the other day, I said, okay, when Constitution Bible says that by by January the 31st, we'd have an annual business meeting. How, how, what, what needs to be done? And she said, Patrick, we just changed, I just changed the Constitution bylaws because I'm not ready. <laughs> I said, well, when?